G'day, my name's Tom, and today we're going to talk about neurons. Okay, this is an example of what a neuron might look like, and uh, it might look a little bit complicated or daunting, uh, but, you know, bear with me, we're going to go through all these things individually, and we're going to talk about what they do, and how the neuron functions as a whole. There's a little side note down down here, and we'll get to that a bit later. Um, now, over here first, uh, we'll, we'll move from left to right across this this cell, this neuron. Uh, we'll talk about dendrites first. Dendrites are these outgrowths, these uh, sort of these outgrowths, these extensions of the cell body or the soma is another name for cell body in a neuron. And the soma is, uh, you know, similar to most other cells in the respect of it has a cell nucleus, it has DNA, and it has the organelles required for protein synthesis. Um, however, it's, just got, it's got these dendrites, uh, which give it a, a funny look. And um, actually, there can be many, many dendrites, up to 400,000 in some neurons. I'm not going to draw 400,000, so um, I've just drawn a few. And what what the dendrites do really, uh, and just simply, is they increase the surface area of the cell uh, dramatically. Um, so, And the purpose for that is so that we can have more inputs or more, you know, different types of inputs. And uh, when I'm talking about inputs, um, I'm talking about signals coming into the neuron, which are then able to be propagated and sent as a signal to something else. And as an example, if, the, if we had an input of another neuron, then uh, we would have what, um, what we call neurotransmitter. I'm just going to write that NT. That's the, abbrevi the abbreviation I'm using for neurotransmitter. And so this is a type of chemical um, which can then, you know, uh, go on to the end of a dendrite or it might go down here or something. And so it's it has, uh, you know, it, it's able to move across what we call here the synapse. Oh, gosh, my writing is terrible. Um, so we have the synapse here, the neurotransmitter going across uh, the synapse and uh, attaching itself to the dendrite to convert this chemical signal, because it is a chemical signal, convert that into an electrical signal. And so then that electrical signal, it gets passed and distributed through the rest of the neuron. But the only point that really counts for the distribution of this electric uh, signal is right here, which we sort of call the triggering zone, but it's really called the axon hillock. And the axon hillock is just the, the start, the first section of the axon, which is this long orange extension which eventually ends here and at the axon hillock if I draw just a little table here if this dotted line represents what we call uh, well if this dotted line uh, represents the threshold which needs to be met for our electrical signal to be propagated down the rest of this axon then, for example, in our example, let's say that we just had one neurotransmitter bind there, and you know, be converted into an electrical signal, and come to the triggering zone. Let's say that comes up to just just less than what we need for an action, what we call an action potential, and we'll, we'll talk about this a bit later as well in other in other videos. But let's say it just got to there, but what happens if we have another one here? Well, the, the combination might be higher. It might reach 
go over the threshold. So we have an action potential and that means that our, uh, that our electrical signal can be propagated down the axon. And of course at different points in the axon it, the uh, electrical signal travels at different rates. Uh, so for example here in the SOMA it travels at a similar rate as it does here and here. That goes slower at this point, slightly slower and a bit slower there and slower here than at these points. And you might say, well why is that? Well it's because of this thing, this, this purple thing that I'm hovering my mouse over. It's the myelin sheath. This is, this is myelin sheath. And um, what that is, it's sort of, it's, well, it's uh, highly, uh, how to say it, it's sort of, it's, it's highly modified um, membrane, plasma membrane, and there's lots and lots of sheets uh, of it, uh, you know, like maybe, you know, 150 layers or more, um, and, you know, so it, and what it does, it, it insulates this axon. And so it sort of protects it, but that's not its main function. Its main function is so that the action, so that the action potential of this electrical current can be propagated faster during this point, faster during that point, and faster during every other point that has, that has been myelinated, right? Um, and the way it does this, I'll just say fast, fast, yeah. And the way it does this um, is something we'll go into a bit later, but uh, uh, it's important just for now to, to know that. And these bits here, these gaps, that's fast there as well. These gaps here are called the nodes of Ronvier. Um, and these nodes of Ronvier uh, were discovered by, obviously, the, the physiologist uh, Ron Vier, and uh, I believe he was German. Um, no, actually, maybe he wasn't. Maybe Schwann was German. Anyway, um, Schwann was the guy who dis who discovered the Schwann cell, which is the type of cell found in the peripheral nervous system. And the peripheral nervous system, we'll get into um, sort of the, the general structure of the nervous system a bit later on. But the peripheral nervous system is basically everything but the spine and brain. The central nervous system is the brain and spine. Uh, the spine cells are what provide the myelin sheath within the peripheral nervous system. And the uh, oligodendrocytes are what provide the myelin sheath in the central nervous system. And um, they provide, they're provided in, in slightly different ways. Uh, spine cells are... Uh, like there's a, a, a cell nucleus here. Uh, actually, I'll do this in purple. There's a, a cell nucleus here and here and here, and these are all individual Schwann cells, whereas an uh, oligodendrocyte actually is sort of separate of the neuron and provides it to like up to 40 different uh, axons. So that would just be one and might provide it to another one and another one up to 40 or more, um, actually I'm not sure if it might, maybe 40 is its sort of upper limit, actually I think it is. Um, anyway, that's just a side note. Um, another thing that uh, is interesting about neurons is uh, they can have, so we've got this main axon here, but it can have offshoots like this uh, axon collateral here. Uh, not all uh, neurons have this, in fact so not all neurons have an axon. There's, there's at least one type of neuron that I know that doesn't have an axon at all, uh, which is sort of weird. But there are just so many wonderful types of neurons. Uh, it's really, uh, really interesting. But um, anyway, this is an axon collateral here, and this is an offshoot, a branch, and it can only branch off at a, a node of Ranvier, or sorry, not Ranvier, Ron, uh, Ronvier. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, yeah, um, anyway, it can only branch off there because it can't penetrate the myelin sheath and you wouldn't really want it to because it would disrupt the action potential, the electric current running down your axon. Uh, so that's, you know, it, that, that's where it branches off. Um, also, there are microtubules. 
microtubules, and um, these microtubules uh, are sort of this, these thin orange lines that I've drawn. You might not be able to see them very well now because of all this other stuff I've written, but um, you basically, we'll talk about these in a later part as well, but they uh, help transport things up and down the axon because uh, it's, you know, it's a long way for the cell uh, to, for example, uh, have neurotransmitter. Uh, they might have some neurotransmitter down here, uh, but you know, different uh, things need to be transported up and down the axon for that neurotransmitter to um, to be there. Uh, and you know, there are other other things as well. Um, and finally, down here at the end, uh, we have the axon terminals. And this is simply where, so, you know, we've got our, we've had our electrical signal, you know, propagate along here and then gets here. It's going a bit slower at this point, um, but, you know, still, you know, relatively fast. And it, it gets to one of these points and it's not, it's, it then becomes not a, uh, a it, it is converted from an electrical signal to a chemical signal usually in the form, well, in the form of neurotransmitter. Um, and then that has all sorts of effects. Might affect another neuron. Might, you know, be an input to another neuron and attach itself to a dendrite and, and do all this thing, all these things again. And actually, I, I should have done this uh, because it'll go, the electrical si signal will go up here as well and that will have effects okay um, but it might have effects on muscle or just other neurons other you know types of cells um, not all axons so not all neurons have this uh, myelinated uh, structure some don't have a myelinated axon unmyelinated axons um, and they're a little bit special because they can have these things called axon uh, varicosities and um, basically these are presynaptic terminals remember uh, I sort of barely wrote synapse here uh, which is the gap between uh, the end of uh, an axon terminal and a dendrite here. If this was a dendrite, this bit here, all that space in between where the neurotransmitter travels between, that is called the synapse. So a presynaptic terminal would be like these axon terminals here. Um, so it's before the synapse, it's presynaptic. And yeah, so basically, neurotransmitter comes out there and has its relevant effect. Um, so it's sort of like uh, uh, it's it's just a bulge in the axon, um, and it's I suppose uh, it's similar in a way to an axon collateral, um, but it it you know it doesn't branch off like that. It just bulges in the middle of an axon. Um, yeah. And also, uh, this break here, that just means that this can extend for a long, long way. Um, some, some axons are up to 10 time, uh, tw uh, sorry, 10,000 times the uh, width of the cell body uh, of the same neuron. So that, you know, that distance there, you know, 10,000 times. Of this one, uh, so yeah, very very long. It can be. Anyway, yeah, sorry for the mess. This has been part one, neurons.